Hi, my name is Laura Garber and I'm the owner and co-operator of Homestead Organics Farm here in Hamilton, Montana. Homestead Organics is a small, family-run, diversified vegetable and poultry farm that we're growing certified organic mixed vegetables for sale at local markets through a CSA cooperative and at our farm stand. And we're producing certified organic meat chickens and heritage turkeys for local sale and we're also um, an education center. We have 14 acres total and under production for vegetables, we probably have about two acres in vegetable production and five or six acres in pasture and then various things like trees and greenhouses. So, what do you think, Laura? <laughs> Actually, the peas look really great, I think. Yeah, they do. I'm Stacy Pease, and I'm the soil conservationist in the Hamilton Field Office. Erosion is one of the natural resource concerns that we try to help agricultural producers address, and so this uh, definitely was an issue for them. They have soils that are fairly susceptible to wind erosion here, so they approached us interested in windbreaks. We help them uh, through designing the windbreak and then they receive funding through the organic initiative, the organic special initiative through the EQIP program. The high tunnels uh, address multiple uh, natural resource issues. One is they uh, reduce erosion and they also extend the growing season and they allow the producer to grow produce that wouldn't be available because they're just not adapted for this area. For them it helps them achieve one of their number one missions which is to uh, grow and sell food locally. Stacy and I have worked together now for maybe four years together or five years. Yeah. As the NRCS representative she knows our farm and is able to see some of the needs that our farm has. So she's able to help us proactively of like, hey, have you thought about the cover crop? So we're becoming better farmers by Stacy knowing what she knows about NRCS programs and applying them to what we're doing. Since they're an organic producer, they can't spray for weeds, so weeds become a big issue. And so cover crops help them. So after they are done with a particular bed and they want to rest that bed in their rotation, they'll plant these cover crops in there and it'll help control the weeds and erosion and everything. So what was this again? Is this oats? This, no, this was rye? rye and spelt. It'd be easy, it would be just as easy for me to say, go, oh, I'll just plant a couple more rows of carrots or let me toss in some more potatoes. Instead, we're like, no, we're cover cropping that and we have a plan already in line with Stacy, and it's, it makes it better for everybody. This year, the, the production is adding back to the soil. The soil is the product. We're also providing habitat with the cover crop. We're providing habitat for beneficial insects and pollinators. So we're, we're enhancing what the rest of our field has to offer to the greater plant, animal, and insect community. This is gonna grow now for at least another month and then it'll get um, terminated, probably mowed and turned under and then reseeded with a longer term summer fall cover crop. They have a lot on their plate uh, so they have a lot to juggle but they um, they're great with the community they work on a wide variety of community and collaborative projects they're great people to work with. So when we first started farming this land we were using all of our property and with the help of NRCS we now have the two windbreaks it's physically separated the field into two different fields because originally farming at all, then we were in danger of becoming soil miners, which isn't a good sustainable practice. So now with the tree break from NRCS cost share and cover cropping, we're really able to better manage that we're not using everything all the time. <laughs>